You may be seated. Well, good morning, people of God of Trinity in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. It's good to be here with you. I'm Pastor Lori Scow Anderson. I'm the assistant to the bishop and the director for Evangelical Mission. And I want to begin by thanking you on behalf of Bishop Hoimi and the whole synod for your partnership in the gospel, for your partnership in sharing the good news of Jesus in this part of the world. Your partnership is very important because we do together what we cannot do alone. We do together in partnership as 200 congregations in this corner of the world what one congregation couldn't do alone. There's so many things that we work on together. I want to thank you for your your partnership as we grow the campus ministries in our synods, the three campus ministries. I want to thank you for your partnership as we grow the four Bible camps that are, reside in our synods. I want to thank you for the partnership that we have in supporting the colleges and universities of the Lutheran Church, Augsburg and St. Olaf and Gustavus and Luther and all the others. I want to thank you for your partnership in the support of our seminaries and of Lutheran World Relief and Lutheran Disaster Response and Lutheran Social Services and the Lutheran Advocacy Ministries of our church. Together we support congregations as they begin the process of calling new pastors. We support seminary interns and candidates for ministry. Together we do all of these things and as well as supporting our companion synods in Malawi. We do this in a and so much more. So I wanted to begin by thanking you for that partnership in ministry. It's an honor to be with you here on Pentecost Sunday. Today we celebrate the movement, the movement of the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Holy Spirit that breaks down barriers and opens up a new way of communicating the gospel, communicating the gospel. With wind and fire and speech, we hear in Acts chapter 2, with wind and fire and speech, people could hear in their own languages the good news about Jesus. So I'd like to invite you to um, take a moment and, and experience a little soundbite of what the Holy Spirit might, might have been doing on that first Pentecost. So I'd like you to uh, take a moment and, and turn to someone sitting near you and say in whatever language you would like, good morning and how are you, the first words that we learn to speak. And uh, if you need some help, there's always going to be a prompt on the screen for you. So in English and German and Spanish and Norwegian or Mandarin Chinese or, uh, or even in the Malawi language of Chichewe, I'd like to count to three. And at the count of three, I lost control, didn't I? Okay. At the count of three... I'm going to ask you all to turn to someone and say, good morning, how are you? And that's going to be our little Pentecost experience this morning. So ready? In whatever language you like. One, two, three. Guten Morgen. Wie geht es mit Ihnen heute? Buenos dias. Como estas? Just a little sound bite, a little cacophony of sound. Imagine what it would have been like on that first Pentecost. Hearing all of those languages and being able to understand what was said by the Parthians, the Medes, the Elamites, the Judeans, the residents of Asia and Mesopotamia must have been a thrill. It must have been a thrill. This, this event has often been interpreted. This event has often been interpreted as a sign that the Holy Spirit is breaking down the walls that separate the ethnic groups and races that had been in place since the days of the building of the, ba of the Tower of Babel. The wind and fire of Pentecost spirit certainly did that. It was the wind and fire of change. Pentecost is often called the birthday of the Christian church. And like all births, it comes with a measure of labor and pain. It's not all cake and candles. What change is the Holy Spirit doing here at Trinity, in this place and in these days? I believe that the that Pentecost is more than a one-time historical event. I believe that Pentecost, the movement of the Spirit, is an ongoing change happening in all places. Now, if you can see on the screen, I invite you to just take a moment and read with me again this text from Acts chapter 2. We read together. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The rush, the rush of a violent wind, fire, images of the Holy Spirit that are wild and powerful and filled with energy, filled with energy, wind and fire. On New Year's Day of this year, January 1st, 2016, I was in an accident. I had the wind knocked out of me. I was snow tubing at a Bible camp in Minnesota, and uh, the tube that I was riding on went out of its track and at a very high rate of speed crashed into a tree. My body hit the tree hard enough to break seven ribs and my clavicle and knock the wind out of me. I lay gasping on the ground, gasping on the ground, gra gasping for breath. I had the wind knocked out of me. I had the life knocked out of me. How many of you have had that experience of having the wind knocked out of you? It's, it's memorable. Pentecost, wind and fire. Pentecost, wind and fire. We've heard a lot about the terrible fire in Canada this week, haven't you? You've heard about Fort McHenry, McMurray and, and about 80,000 people being evacuated from their homes and 10% of the city being burned to the ground. Tragic, tragic. Those people in that town must have felt as though the wind had been knocked out of them. And not only a fire, but a tornadoes, tornadoes. Uh, we've heard a lot about tornadoes this week. People have died in, uh, in the twisters that hit Tornado Alley this week in Oklahoma and Texas and Arkansas. So many people, I'm sure, feel that as though the wind has been knocked out of them, the life has been knocked out of them. Again, tragic. We pray for the people who've lost so much in fire and in wind. And we think of the war zones, the winds of war that have traumatized so many. We pray for them as, as well. But it's not just the folks in the Canadian fire or, the torna or in Tornado Alley or in a war zone that have had the sickening feeling of having the wind knocked out of them. You have too. Maybe not just a football game or in an accident, but metaphorically you've had the wind knocked out of you. I think you know what I mean. You know that time when the phone rang in the middle of the night? You know that time when you didn't get into the college that you dreamed of, when you didn't get that job, when the baby died, when the divorce became real, when you got caught, when somebody finally told the truth, when the reality sunk in. It feels like you've been kicked in the stomach, like you hit a tree, like the wind's been knocked out of your lungs, like life and light is flickering out. And where is God? Where is God when the wind is knocked out of you? Where is God when you're lying on the ground gasping for breath? Where is God when you're watching your dreams blow away or burn up? Where is God in that moment? Dear friends in Christ, those moments on the surface appear to be anti-Pentecost illustrations. Those, sermon, those stories appear to be examples of the absence of God in our lives, the absence of the Spirit in our lives. But are they? Are they? Or are those the very moment when God is most real, when God is on the move, transforming and changing our lives, when God is about to do something brand new in our lives? Dear friends in Christ, today is Pentecost, and our reading from Acts chapter 2 and from the Gospel, John 14, are all about the things that God is doing. It's all about what God's doing, God's actions, God's plans, God's making things happen. God's moving and changing things. God's shaking things up. Fifty days after the miracle of God raising Jesus from the dead, fifty days after the breath of life returned to the one once dead, we are here. The Spirit is moving and giving us the ability to do things we couldn't do on our own. The Spirit gives us the gift to accomplish God's mission, to redeem and restore our world. The spirit of life is here today in this place. Jesus sent the spirit, the advocate, the counselor, the comforter to teach us, to remind us of all that we already know, that God is indeed with us at the lowest points in our lives, 
The Spirit comes to fill us up again, to reinflate our lungs, to fill our lungs with air, and to fill our hearts with peace. You all remember how the Spirit moved over the waters on the, on the time of creation, at the time of creation, and how the Spirit blew life and breath into Adam and Eve. It is that Spirit that blows in us, renews us, fills us, and gives us gifts, gifts and abilities so that we can be people of faith, wind and fire. As baptized children of God, you all, we all have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of faith, wind and fire. The Bible tells us that the Spirit gives all sorts of gifts, the gift of teaching and preaching and the gift of hospitality and administration and healing, the gifts of miracles and speaking in tongues and prophecy. What gift has the Holy Spirit given you? What gift has the Holy Spirit given you? And how might you use your gift to make a difference, to make a real difference in the world this week? How might you use your gift to address real issues, real issues facing real people? How might you feed the hungry, stop someone from bullying, speak a word of justice to some, for someone who has no voice, visit a lonely person, check on a sick neighbor, speak out against racial inequality, bring light and hope and life to your school, your home, your workplace, your community. How can you do this in the name of Jesus? My challenge to you this week is this. Do one thing, one thing this week, using your spirit-given gift to make a difference. And dear friends in Christ, how will your church be a faith, wind, and fire church? Where do you see the evidence of the Holy Spirit moving here at Trinity? How has the wind and fire of the Spirit been transforming and forming your church to be a remarkable church, to be a remarkable church that makes a real difference in your life and in the lives of the people of this community? How is the Holy Spirit moving here today on the, during this time of ongoing Pentecost? So, this week, as you go on your way, it is my hope and prayer that as you go on your way that the Spirit of Christ will go with you, that the Spirit of Christ will go before you to show you the way, that the Spirit of Christ will go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>